Okay, okay, so we've got everything in sync. I'm going to look at the screen here. I might take the odd look back there, but, um, you know, as long as you can see that, that's the main thing. So uh, um, I'm going to talk to you today about um, <coughs> what is a kind of a hypothetical notion, I guess, Cork's unique digital proposition. Um, I don't see why we can't have one. Um, it just doesn't exist yet. So the presentation is going to be about you know, what needs to be done to create it, what will happen if it's created. So it's basically about Cork evolving into, you know, a kind of a, an incredible digital landscape where, you know, everybody's involved, everyone plays a role. So it's, it's very hypothetical, um, might sound a bit naive, but it has a happy ending, as you'll see. So I'm not really proposing a solution. It'd be great, like, if people would chip in with ideas and um, it also is it's not inclusive it does suggest what type of people uh, could play a role in this and if I'm forgetting anybody letting anybody out then please um, let me know so I'm Kieran O'Hay um, I, I, I work for myself in CDO basically means independent chief digital officer um, <coughs> I was the former chief digital officer of Brisbane I uh, was the first person appointed to that role and I spent a few years out there. Um, when I came back to Cork, I kind of had no choice but to become an independent chief digital officer because they're not kind of they're in short supply, you know. In in Ireland, you know, you don't you don't see too many adverts for chief digital officers. Um, maybe I think sometimes they're kind of um, a chief digital officers by another name. Well, that's probably a part of the issue. But um, so basically, what I'm doing, I'm living in. I'm from Cork. I went to ECC. You got a a degree in engineering, but I've been out of Cork a lot, um, working in the EU, in Brussels, and Luxembourg, and Dublin, and, and, and in Brisbane with the uh, council there for a few years. So, but now I'm back, and you know, I'd love to find something to do here, um, you know, which is like a kind of a blatant pitch, I suppose, just um, to let you know that, that I'm around. Um, a, a little bit about Brisbane. Brisbane, um, two million people, so I don't know what that is like. That's nearly 20 times as many people as in Cork, or it's like the population of Ireland minus Dublin, um, if you want to look at it like that. Um, the economy, um, the size of the Brisbane digital, oh, sorry, the Brisbane economy is $130 billion, which is something, you know, it's a little bit less than 100 million um, euro. And they have 130,000 SMEs in Brisbane. And these SMEs generate over 50% of the city's economic value. So, like, living in Australia, you, you know, everything is massive scale. You know, the, it's just the, the numbers are staggering. Um, so what I did is I basically um, I led off by trying to create a kind of a, um, a, kind of a, a snapshot of the city's digital landscape by doing a digital... Uh, audit of the city with Ernst and Young, and um, basically that allowed us to kind of interview about 500 SMEs and find out where they were in their digital journey and kind of create a figure uh, for the city's digital maturity. And <clears throat> one of the ironies of that was that 80% of the SMEs we interviewed said that they were engaged in the digital economy, but in fact only 30% of them really were when you looked at the kind of parameters behind the, the study. So. We also identified lots of digital champions that were already active in, in, in startups and that and, and, and that around the city. So um, it was great. We, we did this audit and um, we, we, it helped us then to establish the priorities for the Brisbane digital strategy, which basically was economically driven. It was actually at a time when there was, I mean, I was only the second person in the world to be the chief digital officer of the city. Um, New York um, was the first city to appoint um, a chief digital officer. They, they went very much with the community-driven type of um, strategy, um, whereas we just went hardcore, did, uh, eco economically driven. So ours was probably the first economic digital eco economy strategy. Um, <clears throat> so we said we're going to double the number of SMEs selling online, we're going to support 250 digital startups, and we're going to improve online public services for residents. So those, those were the three main objectives. And what we did, I mean, well, this was in the time I was, this is still going on, it's a five-year strategy. So uh, basically, we engaged with over 30,000 SMEs in the first year. I mean, I spoke to 4,500 people in that first year um, at groups from, you know, 10 to 300 or whatever. Um, it, was, it was really phenomenal um, exposure. 
we created a business power-up program to help businesses, you know, to help a trusted source develop so that SMEs could understand um, or start to understand, you know, value propositions around digital. And um, we also created the PricewaterhouseCoopers Chair in Digital Economy at one of the local universities, which was aimed at kind of the leadership side, um, trying to get, you know, the, the, the kind of the CEOs and directors of companies to understand more about, about the importance of, 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 of kind of, um, again, developing these value propositions. Um, for the startups, we, within the first year, we supported 30 um, through the Lord Mayor's Bunning Entrepreneur Program, which, you know, it was a kind of community-based program. It, it was not your traditional um, funding system. What would happen is we would go out into the suburbs of Brisbane, tell people about it, and then people would come forward and say, I didn't even know there was a digital startup ecosystem in Brisbane, and I've got this idea for a business. And we would get them into the system, give them a, a bit of support, and, and they'd get into incubators and stuff and they'd, they'd get themselves up and running. Um, <clears throat> we, we had a visiting entrepreneur program. This was really interesting because, um, you know, internally in uh, Brisbane was comparing itself with Sydney and, you know, whatever, compared to Sydney, Brisbane wasn't doing too well. But compared to global figures, Australia wasn't doing too well in terms of startups. So what we did is we decided it's maybe better for Brisbane to compare itself with similar sized cities that are actually doing things uh, interesting things around the world. Um, so we brought entrepreneurs in from places like Stockholm and that, and Boulder, Colorado, and places like that. And we brought them to Brisbane, and we put them in front of local entrepreneurs, and we took them to meet local business people and stakeholders and that type of thing. Um, for the residents, we uh, created a Brisbane City Council Digital Services Group, and basically what this was was like a bit of a Dragon's Den thing where me and the CIO of Brisbane City Council would sit in a room and we'd call people in from different departments like transport and planning and you know um, communications, and we'd ask them what they were doing that was digital related, and they'd kind of think about it and say, well, we've got this project to put Wi-Fi on the buses or whatever. So we, we'd do an, an assessment with them as to whether that had potential to kind of fast track through um, the public uh, Brisbane strategy and kind of out into the public domain. Um, we set up the Digital Brisbane Hub as well, which was a kind of an online um, uh, resource for, for, for people. And then Coder Dojo, who, you know, you're probably all familiar with Coder Dojo. I heard about it here. Ironically, one of the co-founders is, uh, is Australian, living in Cork. I, I learned about it from him. I went to Australia, brought it with me from Cork, and we set it up in Brisbane, and it's been very successful. Um, so basically, what all of this means is in terms of the UDP, uh, the unique digital proposition for Brisbane is, yeah, it's business as usual, the city is investing a lot of money and, um, uh, you know, encouragement to get companies busy using digital and going online and selling, and you know, that's kind of the, hu the, the hustle and bustle of the city, but kind of outside of that, there's a layer where the media um, and, and visitors to the city are noticing this kind of buzz. So, so this kind of reputational thing is growing outside, as I kind of outside this kind of internal shell. So the unique digital proposition is that the city is turning into this kind of you know place where you know people are starting to see interesting things happening and wanting to be part of it. And um, Gartner at one stage said that what was happening there was an example of global digital leadership. So the, the kind of idea for the unique digital proposition came to me from this. Um, the unique digital proposition is something that can be created anywhere, but I don't think any two locations anywhere in the world can be identical in terms of their digital strategy or their digital presence. Um, people keep talking about we're going to be the next Silicon Valley. Well, there is Silicon Valley, so like you've got to talk about becoming you know, something else, something that reflects your own kind of um, context and culture. So every city and town can create its own unique digital proposition. It's just got to look around at what it has and what it's good at and that type of thing and, and look at its talent and, and, and put it together. Um, global digital economy, um, I get very kind of focused, I suppose, in Brisbane on SMEs, but I mean, 80% of the value of the global digital economy you know, it's not going to be Apples and Facebooks and Googles. It's going to be like, you know, the mom and pop businesses, the traditional businesses. I mean, they represent so much. Their momentum is so great that over, over a period of time, they will be influenced by it. But still, still, I think maybe five years on from when I first heard these projections, uh, current projection again are that around 80% of the global digital economy 
is going to be traditional businesses. So you know, we have to accept that if we're, if we're, if we're a, a digital startup, um, um, I mean, you know, people like you guys in the room here, you, you, know, you will be move, working with traditional businesses. You're going to have to maybe help them move with you. But you know, the, the momentum is so great from those traditional businesses that we can't ignore them. And, and these companies are starting to get smart now. I mean, they, they don't want people to tell them anymore how many mobile phones there are in the world and how many people are, you know, are buying stuff online. They know all that. They're absolutely kind of blitzed out from that. What they want is they want to know, well, well how do I take my particular business, which is making like, I don't know, donuts or something, and how do I pick you know, the right combination of digital technology and, and build the right strategy for my particular business. I don't care what's happening with this and that and the other. So they want to create business strategies for the digital age. They don't want to clamp on kind of off-the-shelf boilerplate of digital marketing solutions onto their existing business. <clears throat> That's kind of the, they're, they're maturing a bit, but they still need a lot of help. Um, <clears throat> so my feeling is that the, the, the digital economy is, is basically going to be, you know, as, 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 as the word economy indicates, it's going to be economically driven. I mean, not primarily by technology. I mean, technology will underpin um, the digital economy. But you know, I, I, you're going to see more and more influence from customers, more and more influence from employees within companies. You know, more of that kind of human side. I used to describe myself as the uh, human face of digital disruption when I was in Brisbane. Ireland um, digital economy here in 2011 before I left for Brisbane the digital economy was 5 billion and 4 billion was being spent on overseas purchases and websites and that so 80 uh, percent was going out of the country effectively when I came back <coughs> it had gone up to 8 billion the value of the economy and that's a gr good healthy 60 percent growth um, and the overseas spend had gone up to 5.6 billion which is actually less, it's 70%. So it's improvement, but maybe it's not an improvement. So like, why is so much of this going out of the country? I mean, you know, there are, there are genuine reasons why, uh, uh, but, but there are other things we can do about it. I mean, the Irish SME sector is 200,000 companies. I mean, Brisbane is 130,000 in one city. I mean, you know, just a comparison, I suppose. Um, so the, the claim here is that, you know, 91% of, of SMEs cannot process sales online. So you know, obviously, I guess that explains a lot why people are going and, and buying stuff overseas. They're getting better deals, obviously. The other issue, which is a kind of um, a kind of a slightly worrying, is that the European Commission, when I left, when I left for Brisbane, they're talking about the digital agenda for Europe. Now they're talking about the digital single market. So, um, European, Commission, European Commission is promoting a you know a humongous kind of glo um, European digital single market. Um, it isn't going to um, like interfere to help correct anything within a particular member state. So the fact that Ireland has such a kind of a, you know, a huge amount of its digital economy is going out of the country. You know, if, if all that's been spent in the UK or in Germany or whatever, European Commission isn't going to be that bothered. Um, so I'm not sure where it's all being spent, but certainly that's, um, that, that's one of the issues. So the, the, we, we do have to look at kind of addressing this issue ourselves. Um, 50,000 jobs apparently can be uh, created over the next five years if the number of companies in Ireland doing business online doubles. Now in Brisbane that was our target as well, double the number of companies selling online and um, you know the effects on the economy are pretty pretty dramatic. And what you know all this is national stuff like but what about a regional digital economy i kind of wonder maybe the national thing isn't working it's all very driven from dublin and whatever and uh, you know look at the regional situation i mean if we end up with lots of ludgates down in skibbereen we've got ignites and rubicons in in cork i'm going up for the opening of digital dunleary which is up in uh, the end of september uh the dublin digital hub i've just been doing some work with them recently so if you instead of relying on a kind of a a a, a, a digital strategy which is driven from the center, um, you will end up with lots of pockets of activity. And again, you know, if you take Ludgate, I mean, I've been down there quite a bit, you know, what, what's their UDP going to be? Um, you know, can they develop one? Um, what's the role of public transport in getting people down to Skibreen? I mean, I, I got the bus and Niall, my friend here, rescued me and drove me back again. 
but <clears throat> you know what are they going to do you've got you know global celebrities or whatever coming in from from, from um from abroad in, into Cork Airport, maybe, if Cork Airport uh, increases its routes. And then, yeah, you can get a car, or get a bus to Skibbereen. So things like that are all part of this. So the unique digital proposition, basically, it's providing capacity for high-speed, high-volume digital transactions. That's a kind of a got to be a given. Um, it's um, maybe not yet a given everywhere, but it, it's got to be. Um, it's about transforming existing businesses, but also building new ones that are born online. It's about enhancing quality of life by delivering improved public online services and basically, yeah, packaging all this up and positioning the city as a hub for investment and innovation. That's how I see it. So people will want to live and work in a place like that. So that's obviously going to attract talent and investment um, in, 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 into Cork. Um, the UDP, it includes the city's domestic digital activity, but at the same time ticking over is this growing global reputation. Uh, which can be propagated through you know, proper media campaigns and social media, uh, visitor experience, all that type of thing. Um, it's, all, it's all part of it. Um, there's a load of digital initiatives being managed, presumably, in Cork, separately. I mean, you know, it is in every city. It was the same in Brisbane. There was stuff going on over there, university doing something over there, a company down the road doing something, but nobody was actually talking to anybody. It were all being happening individu individually. And so the idea is to kind of somebody you know or a group or whatever needs to kind of look at maybe doing this kind of audit to identify well, what is going on in the city collectively you know i mean you guys you might all know each other and know what you're doing and you know but maybe there's another group of people just like you who are doing something else down there and you know so that's part of this udp it's really this building this kind of core of of, of capability <clears throat> so Capital cities, I've said this earlier, not necessarily the best, I don't think, at developing UDPs. Regional cities are often quicker and nimbler, so Cork's got, got to get off the mark. I mean, there is no, at the moment, no definable Cork digital strategy that I can find. I've been back from Brisbane a year, and I've been going around and knocking on doors and asking everybody, and I can't find uh, certainly anything that's been published. Um, Destinations, are, they're excellent at presenting a united front around sectors like tourism. So Cork will promote itself as a tourist destination and all the BNBs will say, yeah, we're all, we're all part of this. But they'll compete internally, which is fine, that's the way markets work. But digital and other businesses aren't so good at doing that. You know, maybe there's still uh, competitiveness in there which, you know, needs to um, be addressed. I mean, it, it, we've got to look at ideas like tourism that you know we can come together for certain reasons to promote the united front and then we can do our own thing as well um <clears throat> so the digital audit idea is is kind of a possible starting point um you know identifying and highlighting collective digital excellence of the core companies the universities startups local authorities not for profits i mean the list the list is 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 kind of endless um but somebody needs to kind of think about organizing that um, you could use a digital capability framework to create a snapshot of Cork's digital landscape <coughs> and, uh, and identify well, what's going on out there. Uh, identify digital champions, people who come forward and inspire others publicly. These get, people are often kind of under the radar. Um, you can measure the digital readiness by region within Cork, Cork City, Cork County, etc. And then determine where Cork is on its digital journey and, and, and where it needs to go. Um, so ultimately, you, you can turn it into an integrated digital productivity hub. You've got a lot going on. You've got a lot of business. You've got a lot of productivity. You've got a thriving digital economy. It's making money. Uh, businesses can start up. It's a great environment for that. You're developing intellectual property. You're, you, 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 that, there's not so much of that happening, really. Not enough happening in, in, in Ireland. I mean, the multinationals don't do it a lot here. Um, you know, and, 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 and maybe we should look at that. Maybe we need to be more like Switzerland or something like that and start developing intellectual property more. But products end up being brought to market and then the international reputation starts to kick in. So you're still doing your, your day job, but, you know, outside is this kind of global reputation. So the culture becomes more digital. It becomes integral and in part of the mind, city's mindset. It's more kind of front of mind. Um, it's a fact that businesses with customer-focused integrated digital strategies will grow and export twice as fast, so you get the SMEs on board, uh, and there'll be the increased opportunities for startups. Um, 
you'll be able to compete more effectively in international markets. Digital technologies provide opportunities for enhanced quality of life. Um, the city will attract and retain top talent. I mean, that's absolute key to this. Um, attracting talent is one thing, retaining it's another. Dublin has had its problems, the agencies there have had their problems with you know, talent leaving to join the likes of Facebook and Google. I've, I've experienced that myself firsthand. Um, talent is always an issue, but you've got to not only attract it, but retain it. Um, and the digital economy just needs to become a high priority for corporate businesses. You know. So what have we got? Assets. I mean, these are not technical assets as such, but they're assets. Cork Airport, since I came back last year, people are talking about more flights from... I don't know, to the US and there's some Norwegian company and there's some objection to it and it's this and that and the other. It goes around the circles, you know, nothing too much has happened. Port of Cork is there, office accommodation, is that an issue? I know it's an issue in, in Dublin, people, you know, there's office space. Um, culture and lifestyle is, is, is a given, the people are great, the lifestyle is great, people love the lifestyle, they come and live here for that reason. Convention centre is another issue, you know, are we getting one or not? I've heard about it, I've heard so much talk about it, we need one. We need one to attract the business visitors, the tourists are going to come anyway, but we've got to improve the visitor experience, we've got to um, you know, get them talking about Cork when they go back. Um, we've got to in improve the kind of digital experience for them on the ground. Um, and the talented workforce I mentioned earlier um, uh, is, is part of that as well. We've got this support structure. I mean, there's others, I'm sure. This is just a list I put together. City Council, County Council, Enterprise Ireland's in the mix somewhere. There's the IDA, there's the local enterprise offices. Cork Chamber of Commerce, IT of Cork, Cork Smart Gateway, which is recent, but you, you probably know about that. <coughs> Quite a strong focus on things like Internet of Things there. <coughs> Cork Innovates, Cork Big. I mean, that's a lot, that's a lot of um, support structure for a city this size, and like, you know, it just really needs to be kind of delivering on this digital strategy. Um, we've got research, we've got UCC, Tyndall, Nimbus to name but three. Um, they're all part of the mix. Um, Tyndall and Nimbus, both part of this Cork Smart Gateway. Businesses, we've got large indigenous businesses like maybe, I don't know, Musgraves, for example, who are actually, you know, quite doing a lot of interesting stuff with digital. You've got the SMEs, the core of the business community, and you've got the multinationals who are there as well. Um, you know, they've got a role to play in this. Maybe they've got more of a role to play than they have played up to now. Maybe, you know, we need to look at uh, FDI 2.0 or whatever, that's what I'm calling it anyway. And you've got the born online, you've got the startups um, and incubators, startups. It's not good enough just to be a startup. You need to be looking at scaling. Um, I did um, some research recently with the Digital Hub in Dublin. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of frightening the number of companies uh, that really like our, you know, their ambitions to scale are, 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 are low and the number of companies who are in a position to scale is relatively low and, uh, you know, you, you, we do need to address that. We do need to encourage more companies to scale up. Um, the community, Code or Dojo I mentioned, we've got, you can organize hackathons, I'm sure that happens anyway. Public apps, um, you know, open data projects, you know, what's going on in, 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 with that in Cork. Um, so I'm saying actions needed at government level, it's a bit of a cliche, to define and deliver the environment within which this reputation can involve. So I think there's enough players there, I think there's enough evidence that we need to do something. And uh, the kind of happy ending is that I found, when I, I searched for um, Cork City Council Digital Strategy on Google, and I mean, I have been meeting a lot of these people, to be honest with you, so I know some of the people involved in this. And this is an extract, which you might be able to read. It's a bit fuzzy, it's a PDF. Uh, minutes of the ordinary meeting of Cork City Council held on Monday, 13th of June, 2016, digital audit of the city. <clears throat> uh, the Cork City Council will carry out digital audit of the city that identifies where digital innovation is taking place across all sectors of the city, opportunities for digital innovation within the city, put in place a full digital strategy, uh, sets clear five-year targets for the city, including doubling the number of Cork firms selling products and services online, 35% improvement in productivity growth achieved through digital technology support for 100 promising local digital startup companies. So, like, I actually have no idea where that came from, but, I mean, that's um, great if that can happen. Um, it's only a proposal at the moment. I'm trying to find out where it's going, um, but that is, that is online, that is in the public minutes, so... 
clearly they are thinking about getting into this, and that's good. So, um, so yes, yeah, so after that big rant, I could have saved you all the time, just showed you that good bit of news at the end, but I just thought, well, you know, I'll tell you what I've been doing and what I do. So what I do is, what I want is I want to see this stuff happening, basically. Um, that's, that's thank you. And um, if there's any questions, I'll take them now, please. Um, no, that's fine too. Yeah, we have a few minutes for questions. So have you, so you saw the minutes? And I, I saw the minutes, yeah. And did you, were you able to get in contact with any of the people that were at that meeting? Um, I'm, in the pro I'm in the process of doing it. I only saw it, like, actually when I was preparing the presentation. And um, I'm just getting over it, about a flu, which kind of knocked me out for a few days. And I thought, well, yeah, I think about, I'll wait, my head's clear. So probably tomorrow or the day after, I'll, I'll start on that. It's just, um, you, know, it, I, you know, I'm not claiming credit for it, but I mean, you know, the terminology that's in that document that they've published is very, very similar to the kind of stuff I've been, you know, kind of, you know, they, would, they are very, very aware of, of the Brisbane Digital Strategy and, and, and what its objectives were, and um, it, you know, it's quite closely aligned with that, but I don't necessarily believe that what was right for a city of two million people is, is right for, you know, Cork. I don't, as like I said earlier, I don't think that you can just boilerplate, you know, one onto the other. But just the fact that I, that's there is, is, is fantastic. I just don't know um, where it went as a proposal, but it was only in June and we've had summer holidays. It's probably nothing's happened since. So. And, the, and then just to follow on from that, do you think, do you think that's in, do you think it's in the right hands? I know the council and government is... Yeah. is, is uh, uh, being as well. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, is is it better to kind of you know get the the, the top ten the top ten biggest companies in software companies in, in Cork, for example, or digital companies in Cork, in, all together around a table and and talk this through and then kind of push harder at the at the council, or should or does it just need to come from loads of different directions? Um. No, I think that, um, I mean, I know I'm being recorded in that, but, you know, I'm, I'm very used to me kind of ranting on, I think. Uh, um, I, I think the one thing that would concern me is the, the, the Cork Smart Gateway project that they've, they've uh, created um, is, is seen by some people as the digital strategy and the answer to that. But if you look into the objectives of that, it doesn't cover, the, for me anyway, strongly enough, the kind of economic development side of things. It covers a lot the kind of the technology, the Internet of Things, and maybe the kind of um, the kind of benefits of that to to, to citizens. And the, the, you know, w when cities are looking at digital strategies, um, there are lots of different templates. You know, they can take. Some will very much look at digital as a cost-saving um, device. Some will look at look at it as a way to to engage directly with businesses and and citizens uh, in terms of say online voting or online tendering. I think in Brisbane what we did is we decided to um, really help the kind of citizens uh, and the businesses empower themselves to understand and go forward themselves without, you know, um, we, we weren't giving out grants and things like that and e-vouchers and stuff like that. Um, so I think, um, you look, uh, there isn't, say, a Cork Digital Association. I don't know whether there needs to be one. There is IT at Cork. And um, I'm a member of that, and if you talk to people in that, some people will say that, well, we, we're, you know, we're, we know about this digital strategy thing and we need to do something about that. Um, but I do think that you, it would be good to have some informed people behind this. I mean, I'm just one person. I came back from Brisbane and said, well, I did it there. I think it should be done here. But... Um, but, but genuinely, I think there, there, there are people who, who, with good intentions in the council, who believe they are doing this already. And, and I, I would kind of say, well, we need maybe someone to come, maybe as a group, like you suggest, to, to, to kind of provide a bit of counterbalance to that, you know. But I mean, I can only say that I think it's, I think it's good, at least, that that's in there, you know. So. There, there was a, an article in The Independent it showed um, Cork getting less uh, BC money than Limerick and Galway. And Cork seemed to be kind of stand out that there was very little startup activity here. 
Have you looked at that and why that might be the case? Um, I know Limerick is doing a digital strategy. The council there is doing a digital strategy. Um, it's, it's all very kind of erratic, you know, like Mayo is doing a digital strategy. I mean, Skibbereen is doing its, its thing. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, the, um, you know, in, 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 I know like not necessarily in Cork, but I know that in, in cities where you have very strong, uh, like university culture, um, kind of the tenure that, you know, people can have in universities, like is actually prohibiting them or inhibiting them from, from going in, into the startup world. I mean, Brisbane even is an example of that. Um, I mean, the average age of somebody starting a company in Brisbane is 32, um, you know, as opposed to like 22 in kind of Silicon Valley. So um, I think, again, like it's different, different environments kind of affect these things. But I, I don't know. Um, I mean, I mentioned things like Rubicon and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and um, but I, I'm not, you know, they, they're just entities people mention to me. I don't know them that well, personally. I don't know what's happening in them, how many startups are coming out of them. Ignite is the other one I think I mentioned. Um, so the Rubicon started because of um, Motorola were leaving Cork. And so yeah. the idea was to, um, to get, the, get these highly skilled employees mm -hmm. of Motorola to start up companies and mm -hmm. kind of keep some of the skills in Cork. But I think mm -hmm. only 3% yeah. actually went through the Genesis scheme that was called back then. So there's, yeah. there's, I think there's a kind of um, a really catering to the multinationals, but not much to the ladies. Yeah, I mean, an another thing I noticed since I came back to Cork is that um, um, whenever you suggest something, doing something new, um, you often get the response, well, if we can get money from the European Commission, we'll do it. But there may be still a tendency to almost like regard the EU as a kind of a venture capital source. Uh, you know, I mean, I've come across it now since I came back, where I've gone to people with ideas for things, and good idea, but we'll see, maybe we'll go and get, try and get a grant from the EU to do it, rather than, you know, look at going to kind of, you know, maybe what you might call this, the, 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 the Silicon Valley route, you know. But, um, private investors. Mm -hmm. oh, where private, private investors, is it? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Um, that, 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 that's, that's still quite strong in the culture uh, here, I think, you know, the, the, the tendency to look towards the EU for, for, for funding. I don't know whether that's like affecting it or not. Um, so I, I don't have a, uh, probably a good answer for you. I mean, certainly I can't compare Cork and Limerick, but I do know Limerick um, City Council is, uh, is, 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 is developing a digital strategy. Um, known about that like since nearly this time last year. So. From the Brisbane experience, where was the, where was the capital coming from to, to actually fulfill whatever the goals were of the strategy? Was it, was it going to be council, was it council coffers or? Or was it a case of having to go and get private? Uh, um, well, it was. It was the, the, count, the council. Uh, the council paid the budget for the digital strategy, but the um, the implementation of the strategy. Um, I mean, in, in in one case I mentioned where um, we set up the Price Waterhouse Coopers Chair in Digital Economy. I brought together the the, the local government, the state government, PwC, and a local university. And between those four organisations who hadn't kind of worked, well, four of them hadn't worked together before, uh, they all knew each other, but they, they pledged two million Australian dollars to establish and fund that share for five years. So that, that took one of the actions out of the strategy and dealt with it. Um, and things like the Queensland and um, um, Chambers of Commerce, you know, were, were very active as well in it. So the, the, the basic... Um, the, f the funding of the digital audit, the digital strategy, uh, you know, the, 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 my salary, the salary of my team, they were paid for by the, by the city. That was out of the budget. But beyond that, you know, the, we were trying to um, yeah. raise funds from other, other sources, partnerships and that type of thing. And we were, we were you know, we were even charging, um, we were organising events and workshops and digital 101 sessions and, you know, um, you know, charging nominal amounts, 25, 35 euro, uh, dollars to get into those. 
Um, but basically, you know, I mean, that would have been a relatively small amount of money, but we, we would have engaged with, you know, several thousand um, people that way during the course of the year or so. But primarily, the, the core funding was coming from, from, from the, the city budget. Yeah. yeah, so you mentioned multiple times that we wanted to result in actually attracting talent to Cork. Yeah. And uh, I heard that at this very moment, many companies have problem to accommodate skilled professionals that want to come to Cork. Do you think that it might be like a big obstacle in achieving the strategy that you were talking about? You mean accommodate them in, in what sense? In find I don't, accommodation? I don't mean office, I mean the accommodation. You mean housing? Relief, yes. Yeah, well, I mean, it, I, I, I know that it's a, a well-publicized problem in Dublin. I, I didn't realize it was uh, also um, an issue in, in, in Cork. But I mean, it shouldn't be, um, you know, that shouldn't be a prohibiting factor, I guess, in, mm -hmm. in achieving this. But, um, but there must, you know, there must be new models possible for, for, for you know, kind of getting around that. Um, um, I mean, I, 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 I don't know what to say about it really. I'm not in that kind of real estate business, but I mean, it, it seems crazy that uh, opportunities are being lost to, to hire people because there are accommodation issues. Um, I know in the, in the digital hub where I was working for a few months earlier this year, I mean, they're building, uh, you know, kind of purpose-built kind of accommodation for, for people who will come and work in, uh, in kind of startups and that type of thing. and. Uh, you know, so there, but that that digital hub area is is, is a, a digital district. You know, has a, always had quite a strong emphasis on on property. Um, so, uh, but in Cork, I wasn't aware that that was uh, a, a, an issue. I mean, it's um, it's. I mean, it, it's got to be a reflection if you have a, a company like uh, um, Voxpo, Voxpro. Is it the the, the call center? Yeah. yeah, I mean, th th they're expanding at like such a fast rate. Every time I open paper, like they're expanding here and they're expanding outside. <coughs> and I mean, uh, their requirement for people with foreign language skills is incredibly high. So obviously, a lot of those people are going to have to come in here from outside the country. So you know, if the accommodation aspect is not taken care of, then you know that 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 whole process will will fall apart. Um, so. Um, I, I don't know. I don't have. I don't have uh, an answer for it. I mean, I know if you look at say um, Airbnb. I mean, there is um, people don't want to kind of take people in on a long term basis there. You know, I mean, I know that that's a that's a kind of a model for short term accommodation. But I mean, if if people are staying here longer term, it's obviously not going to work unless you can persuade or, or create a new environment like that where where people are willing to accept people on a more long term basis as tenants. But um, it's, I mean, it's it's a good question. I didn't realize that myself, to be honest with you. I'm not. I haven't uh, encountered that myself. Sorry. Do you think, I'm just wondering. Do you think that the number of support structures that we have in place and the number of bodies is actually working against us? Because obviously they all have their own agenda. They all have things that they want to achieve, and then maybe it's preventing the coming together of one body looking at it holistically. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's an issue? Is that why yeah. you places like Limerick or, or Galway or have managed to get it together? Well, I, I don't know. I know. I just know that Limerick, um, they're, they're, the council there, is developing a digital strategy. Um, I'm not sure about behind the scenes uh, what the different kind of stakeholders are, but yeah, I, 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 I do think that you know, if you have like an organisation that has a kind of a generic remit to kind of uh, support business in Cork, um, you know, that, that a lot of different categories it's got to cater for. So, you know. Um, you know, I, I don't want to sound cynical, but you know, they, they might say, okay, all right, it's, uh, it's about time we did something on digital, so let's have a digital day or whatever. And so they have a digital day and people come and they attend and they enjoy it and they leave, but then there's no continuity. You know, it doesn't lead to anything else. So, so I think there probably does need to be something specific. There is nothing, nothing specific like there if you, if you take the idea of a cork digital association and i don't even know if that's a good idea to make another association but um 
uh, I mean, you know, IT at Cork is very broad as well. I mean, it'll probably deal with digital as uh, as a module. Um, I mean, Cork Chambers of Commerce says that they're busy with everybody, with every type of business, um, so they can dedicate a certain amount of time to digital. So there isn't really anything that I can think of that's dedicated. Mm -hmm. And I think you do need something. Uh, at, at least when I went to Brisbane, um, the city decided to appoint me, and my job was solely to do this stuff. And, um, you know, I wasn't like trying to sort out I IT problems in, in the council itself. I was out there and only dealing with the, uh, the objective of, of developing the digital economy. So, you know, whether Cork needs a chief digital officer, I don't know, that might be going too far, but certainly it, it would be good to have um, some kind of organization that would be just working on that issue and maybe bringing together some of the, the interested parties that were mentioned earlier, you know, just to bring them, bring them together and kind of do some consultation um, because, uh, you know, I, I, I think this, the council has good intentions, but I mean, I did ask the question once uh, of, of someone in the council and I said, what about the digital strategy? And I said, well, you know, when, when we need one, we'll get one. But we've got to do this and we've got to do that and we've got to look after the parks and we've got to, you know, and, and councils like it's, in, in Australia they always said it's all about kind of, you know, rates and rubbish or whatever, you know, it's probably the same here, that those are kind of the priorities that the councillors are elected to, you know, um, they have a, you know, an obligation towards their constituents in whatever area elected them. So that's kind of, you know, a priority to get those things that, you know, people can see things are happening, but digital is a little bit t intangible. Uh, and that's probably part of the reason that this might not be happening as well, you know. I think it needs to be industry driven. I mean, mm -hmm. I was in Brisbane at the same time as you. Yeah. And uh, they have a Microsoft accelerator there. And yeah. That seems to be doing really well. But um, in the uh, natural resources industry, the mining sector, they actually hosted hackathons where they got people like in yeah. this room. And they said, here's the issues we're having. You know, can you come up with a brighter idea? And basically, it was a, a way of getting cheaper yeah. consultants. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it was, yeah. but um, yeah. you know, they had a hackathon up in Dublin Airport as well, yeah, which was very popular. And, you know, if you could do something like that for Cork, or you know, even if it was for agriculture, mm -hmm. or, or definitely, I mean, I think the ideas are going to come from the industry. Yeah, 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 yeah. The university in Brisbane QUT had this idea of, um, you know, uh, kind of mobilising kind of digital native students to you know, en masse attack real life industry problems, you know. Yeah. And um, I think PwC set something up there as well just before I left, um, which was about kind of going in and kind of, you know, brainstorming kind of public sector problems. But a, a lot of it kind of had, 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 had its um, motivation in, in, in kind of helping the government to sort out its own problems. A lot, a, a lot of digital government seems to be a bit like that, that they, they, they're looking at digital as um, a way of, you know, helping them to kind of, co you know, kind of economize or, 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 or know when your bin is full so they can come and collect it. And, and so the, kind of the empowerment of, of, of businesses and citizens long term uh, isn't something that I think that um, they, they kind of, mm. most of them get, can get their head around that kind of uh, idea, that kind of philanthro philanthropic idea, if you like. So. Yeah. But no, I, I remember, yeah, I remember that, all right. The, the thing about hackathons, I suppose, in my experience, they did, did one for uh, Brisbane cyclopaths when I was there, not psychopaths, no, cyclopaths, and uh, um, it was great, like a weekend, and, and there was a website set up, and then on the Monday morning, all the people went back to work, and you know, all these half-finished kind of apps were kind of hanging off this website, you know, so it needs to go a bit further, you know, than just a kind of, uh, hackathon's great for, you know, kind of creating a buzz, I think, but you know, the Australian st uh, Queensland state government record on converting open data to apps is actually very low because that kind of thinking isn't put into it. So, all right. Okay, I think in the interest of more pizza. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If anybody has any questions, I guess they can ask you afterwards or if you want to come in for pizza, we can Yeah, sure. Okay, that'd that be great. Really, really great. I'll just wonder. <laughs>